Hey everyone, now if you found yourself here, you're probably like me, you're wondering about Clipper and the Ender 5 Plus on a stock setup. So we're going to run through this and I'm going to show you what you need to do. I'm going to have links to all these different websites in the description below. So check those out to help you out as we go along. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to install Fluid. So we're going to go to the GitHub and download the latest Fluid Pi Lite and that's going to take a minute to download so we'll just skip ahead. Alright now that that's downloaded we're going to get our micro SD card and we're going to plug it into the computer so that we can flash it. So now that we got the SD card plugged into the computer we go into Valen Valena Etcher. There you go. I'm going to flash from file. I'm going to choose that new zip file. I'm going to select the target. I'm going to select our SD card that we have plugged in and we're going to go ahead and flash that. So once it's done, it's going to finish flashing. It'll close out the drive, and from what it looks like, it has ejected it. So you're going to have to go ahead, remove the SD card from your computer, go ahead and plug it back in, close Belen Etcher. We're going to go here to the FluidPy WPA supplicant file. We're going to go ahead and open that up, and this is how we connect the Raspberry Pi to our network. So we're going to have to go ahead and remove these comments in the WPA WPA2 and in the SSID you're going to go ahead and put your your Wi-Fi user or your Wi-Fi name in here. Uh, just a, a quick note this is case sensitive so if there are upper or lower case letters in your your Wi-Fi name you're going to need to have that in there and then you're going to end up putting your password for to connect to your Wi-Fi in here. And then after that's done, you can just go ahead and save the file. And close that out. Close out our other file. And then we can go ahead and eject our SD card. So now that we've ejected our SD card, we're going to go over here. I'm going to put it in my Raspberry Pi. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn on my my Raspberry Pi with that new SD card inserted. This is going to take a second here. So now that you have your Raspberry Pi plugged in, you should be able to go in and figure out what your IP address is. Uh, for me, I'm actually using a Netgear router, so I'm going to just going to go in here. I'm going to log in. And then I'm going to go to Attach Devices, and it should show up in here, Raspberry Pi. And then I can copy my IP address. So I'll go ahead and copy my IP address and plug it in here on my internet, and it should show up there. We've got, we've got Fluid is installed on our Raspberry Pi, and this is our ability to access it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into... Uh, putty so that we can SSH into our Raspberry Pi. I'm going to go ahead and that's the, uh, I, that's the same IP address that I just got from my Netgear router and we're going to go ahead and open and click yes. So log in as uh, the, the standard is Pi and the password is Raspberry. And then you're going to show up here with this Pi at Fluid Pi. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our instructions now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to install K-I-A-U-H, I don't know how to pronounce that, but we're going to go ahead and copy this. And then we're going to right click and that'll paste it inside of PuTTY and that'll clone that on there. And then we'll take our next step and we'll change our directory to Kiowa. Paste that there. Change our permissions. And then we can run the install script. And then we're just going to quit that. So at this point, now that we've installed Kiowa, we need to configure this so that we can use the stock screen of the Ender 5 Plus. There's a special type of firmware for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here. 
And we're going to change our directory to Clipper. We're going to get this Desu Clipper from GitHub, so we copy that. We're going to fetch it. Changes. So this is where things are going to be a little bit different. This uh, website I found is for the Ender 6, but with the Ender 5 Plus, we can go ahead and make menu config. This pop up. So we want to make sure that this is an AT Mega AVR, and the AT Mega is 2560, and that is correct. Now this. This little section here is where it's going to be different than most installs for Clipper, especially for the Ender 5 Plus. This is the script that allows us to run the stock screen. So make sure that we have this little star here to enable us to use that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hit Escape. And do we want to save the configuration? Yes, we do. Uh, now I'm actually going to go over to the Clipper configuration instructions. And I, uh, we are already in the CD Clipper. We already did the make menu config. What, what we're going to do next is we are going to make, type M-A-K-E, and hit enter. So at this point, I'm actually going to go over and make sure that my uh, USB cable is plugged in from my Raspberry Pi and my printer, and then I'm going to turn my printer on. So now that I have my printer on, I'm going to run this script right here so I can find out what port my is hooked, hooked up to on the Raspberry Pi. Now I'll keep track of this here. And next thing we're going to do is we're going to type in sudo service clipper stop. And it's going to ask us for the password again, which is raspberry, R A S P B E R R Y. And hit enter. Next we're going to copy this, and it says make flash flash device equals. And we'll copy all of that, paste it in the putty. And then we will take this uh, port from our USB that we had earlier and highlight it and then right click here. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit enter. And now it's actually flashing Clipper firmware onto our control board in our printer. And now that that's done, we're going to start our Clipper service again. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go on the fluid pie. And now that we are in here, we actually are able to connect to the printer with fluid. And it says that it's unable to open a config file. And that's because we don't actually have one in there. I do already have one saved. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and upload my config file. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this. And I'll actually share this config file with everybody so that they have a, a good base. One of the things that you're going to need to do is go into this config file scroll down to MCU this MCU information here that should be the same as your serial port that we pulled in Putty. So I'm double checking mine. Yes, mine is correct but you can copy this and paste it in here. This is so that Fluid can connect uh, with your printer and talk to your printer. You can save, save and restart. This is Clippy's not host not connected. Printer not ready. And now our printer is up and running. That's it. You should be able to control your printer from here. When you go to the terminal console. See what happens here. And my printer is homing. Now, the only change we need to make in our printer config file is to add this script right here at the very end. This is what's going to tell your firmware on your Raspberry Pi and Fluid and your printer how to use the stock screen. So, if this isn't in there, your stock screen won't work after flashing the new firmware. Now that we have Clipper installed in our printer working with Fluid, 
Next thing we're going to want to do is uh, update the firmware on our stock screen so that we can use our stock screen with Clipper. Now, the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to go to this website and we are going to download the latest release of the firmware. It's a dwinset.tar.gz. Once that's open, we're going to show in folder and we are going to go ahead and extract files here. We can open that up. And the DWIN set. We're going to copy that. And we're going to insert our SD card. Now, this SD card has to be 8 gigabytes or smaller. And after we insert it, we're going to go ahead and we're going to format this SD card. See, it's smaller than 8 gigabytes. It's FAT32. And we need to allocate it at a 4096 byte size. Otherwise, this won't work. And we'll go ahead and format that. Click OK and close. And then we can go ahead and paste the DWIN set. Now you make sure it's actually labeled DWIN set. And go in and look, make sure everything is in there. It should be the root folder. We're going to eject our SD card and then we're going to take our SD card over to the printer and we'll see over there. All right we're over here at the printer and what we're going to do is we're going to remove the bottom board and while we're doing this just before you get started you need to make sure that the SD card on the side of the printer, the USB cable from your Raspberry Pi, any other USB cables are unplugged and you've unplugged the power cable from the back of the printer. Now the reason that we're opening this up is inside the screen is a SD card slot and that's what we're going to use to flash our new firmware so that it works with Clipper. Alright now I got the back off I'm going to go ahead and unplug our fan. If I can put that off to the side. We're going to take our SD card with our firmware and insert it in the back of the screen here. Go ahead and plug our power cable back in and turn our power on. Now this is what the screen looks like when it's updating. All right, when you got SD card process end with an exclamation point at the top, that means your firmware is updated on your screen and go ahead and power off the printer. Once power's off, go ahead and unplug our power cable. We can eject our SD card. And check everything out. Go ahead and plug our power cable back in. And turn the power back on. Now because our Raspberry Pi is not plugged in, the screen will actually just say Clipper on it right now. When we plug our Raspberry Pi back in here in a minute, the screen will work. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and shut it off, remove my power cable, I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the bottom plate. Now we've got our bottom plate back on, printer's right side up. We're going to go ahead and plug our power cable back in. Before we do anything else, we're going to take our Raspberry Pi, plug it into the side of the printer. We're going to turn on the printer, let that heat up. Then we're going to turn on our Raspberry Pi. And see, now we have a screen again. Let's just go ahead and home, see what happens. And there it goes.
Hey, I hope this video was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them in the comments below.